here it is okay <laughs> i forgot to turn on the the microphone so i have to fix here i've i haven't used this um i haven't used I haven't used OBS and I haven't done streaming for quite a long time, so I have to do a little bit of a fix here. Uh, yep. Because otherwise I might have been playing around with it and forgot to put it back as it was. So as I was saying, uh, before I noticed that I had all of these mistakes uh, in my setup. So some time ago I developed a software, or not a software, a plugin for a software uh, that is used uh, to automate things. That software is the stock uh, framework. I'll show you the stock framework. I think they have a site, yeah. So this software is used to automate um, multiple actions. Uh, it's mostly focused on file analysis. It has a lot of things about uh, uh, file analysis, about extracting uh, uh, information from files, analyzing files, decompressing files, doing a, a lot of stuff with files. It also allows as other plugins. Uh, this is not working very well. Okay. Uh, let me see. What can I show you from this? Uh, documentation is not the best place. I wanted some diagrams, but. In a nutshell, the idea is that you provide some information, some inputs, it automates some actions and generates some outputs. And it is also highly distributable. It allows you to distribute all of those, pro that, all of that processing, all of those, those tasks on workers using uh, message queuing mechanisms like RabbitMQ, uh, Redis as well. Um, so it's 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 very interesting software. Uh, it's open source, um, and at the time I was playing with it, and I was doing some malware analysis and trying to automate some of of that. And I also discovered this uh, software from uh, Quark's lab called Leaf which basically is a library to instrument executable formats. Um, and it can generate, um, how do you say, a uniform representation of binaries independent of whether they are ELF files, so for Linux, or they are uh, P files, uh, Windows and Mako uh, for OS X. So this is also a very interesting software. So what I did at the time, I created this plugin. So let me see, here it is. If we look at the commit. Oh, no, not in here, sorry, not this branch. It. Maybe it's easier if I go to the pull request. I probably deleted the the branch and didn't um, didn't update my master. Oh, here it is. Wait. So there was two iterations on that uh, plugin. And basically, this was it. 
so what the plugin would do uh, similar to other plugins that stock framework had like the p file uh, and others it will read uh, p file it will only accept a p file and it will so here it is so it's basically trying to open the the file provided in stock when, when the stock framework is analyzing that file it reads it creates a payload and then basically we try to open that payload with leaf and um, if it works so here it is basically if this doesn't fail this function here doesn't fail opening the file is a bad format or the file or the file is not supported then if it's if it works okay then it abstracts the file to json uh, and then sends it basically back to the stock framework to be generated as an output so this works fine apart from this here uh, because in Python, basically transforming a list uh, or generating a list like this is very, uh, if, especially if this argument here has a lot of elements, transforming from array, from a, one array to a list is not recommended to do it in this way, but it's pretty much the only way. Um, so we will have to see if there is a now another a better way to do this as well uh, because it has to do on how leaf parses the payload versus uh, actually this is wrong i think looking at it right now this should be data not payload interesting not sure if this was corrected in any case let's Let's double check. Maybe this was wrong. Um, and basically, we have to go back and uh, we have to uh, to redo this plugin because uh, Stock Framework itself changed its API. So the plugins no longer uh, follow the same API. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, what changed on the API. I'm not sure if they have any extra documentation we'll have most likely have to check so let's just uh, it's already here. So we'll have to to go and check uh, what changed. Anyways, let's start by the basic uh well, first things first let's just create uh, let's just create a working directory uh, i don't know it doesn't really matter much well, let's just call it stock Let's move here. I might not finish this by today because it's already late. I didn't. Uh, I was planning to do this um, this uh, stream for some time, but uh, I got delayed. Um, was hoping I could do it sooner. So let's see what I can. Uh, do before it's like three in the morning or something so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna check out stock so the base the base framework and we're gonna check out stock plugin Let's 
see everything is okay the next thing i'm going to do is set up a virtual way environment for python so that i don't uh, break anything um, shall i do python 2 or python 3 not sure yeah python 3 i think that's uh, what they support python 3 This is the plugins installation. Okay. So minimum requirements requires a minimum of Python 3.6. We run in a Python virtual environment. So let's just do that. Oh, I forgot. So let's call it env stock. Okay. <coughs> So now let's activate the environment, the Python virtual environment. So we should be golden right now. Yep, perfect. So let's now do the installation from pip. I don't want to do that. I want to do for development. So let's just move to stock. Actually, I'm going to change uh, change the name of this directory to something different because otherwise I might just get confused sometimes. So let's do Python setup pi install. What does it complain about? Fine. Okay, so maybe let's just uh, version of. Oh, okay, Python 3. It really has to be Python specified, otherwise, it uses the system. No? So, why isn't it? Hmm. This shouldn't be happening, by the way. Should be using the one from uh, the virtual environment. So why isn't it using the one from in the virtual environment? Let's use source then. to stock <laughs> this is going to be interesting why the hell isn't this isn't this working uh, um, I'm missing something Try something new. Let's try something new. Uh, let's do it as they instruct. Let's use Python tree itself. Dash M. M. And let's create dot M. Let's do that. Uh, 
let's do that. Yes, you can download. So I should have done some uh, some preparation beforehand, but uh, in this way uh, is also good for anybody that doesn't has doesn't have uh, that much experience with Python to see how to deal with the multitude of problems that one gets when trying to use Python. So now it should be oh, should be okay. Let's see. Probably, yeah. Let's just do. Uh, let's try again. Nah, now it works perfect. So clearly, virtual env most likely doesn't work for Python uh, 3. So now we have installed. Now let's install, we have installed the main framework, let's install the plugins. And let's exit this one, which means no longer needed. So it says to install from GitHub, from a directory. Dev environment, we clone. No, nothing like that. Stock install. Okay, so if you want to install the plugins, um, I want to install them all. How do we install them all? Is there any instruction to install them all? I don't think so. I don't feel like installing them one by one well let's install first this one p info so let's install it manually so let's do stock what was the instruction by the way stock install and then from directory and it's just stock install and then yeah yeah uh, stock plugin info. Okay. No such file or directory. Uh, Stockholm is invalid. Oh. Okay, so let's see. Okay. Okay, so let's let's do export stock home. Home research desktop development and let's put it uh, let's call it home really I don't want to do any hidden files or anything like that I just want to do this then I'm going to do a directory for the actually no let's do it like this and make a directory for the plugins which is the name right so let's now try to install again ok 
Okay, so a failed boil. In any case, it seems that it properly installed. So now we have at least one plugin for stock, and this is the P file. Let's install another one that might exist. So we probably need standard out as well. So let's install standard out. Uh, which which other? What other plugin makes sense? Exif. Exif looks good. Let's see dash. I don't remember exactly what this one does. Is a worker plugin generates okay that looks good as well just in case we want to test some more things um, and exif i don't know if we have the exif tool yeah we have exif so let's install exif Okay, let's see what stock says. So. so you have, okay, let's do a list, see if everything worked properly. Yep. Also, one of the things I didn't mention is that uh, there are different types of plugins, connectors, workers, uh, which other one? This one is a provider. Um, if we do our plugin, we might we will have to do this. Okay, we'll have to create a README file as well, which before you didn't. So that's another nice thing to to be aware of. Uh, Okay, cool. So now, now that this is installed, let's do some examples. Well, I can just, I might just do an installation here. It is getting started. Hmm. Do I need a file? Is there a file plugin that I need to install? No, I don't think so, right? File dear. Hmm. Maybe I'll need to install a provider plugin because I only have workers and connectors, but I might need to. Provider plugins are playable to the stock queue for processing. Archiver. Yep. Uh, so these are the various types of plugins dispatcher which dispatcher archiver decorator hmm. <clears throat> stockholm so yeah that was one of the things that we were missing so oh perfect <coughs> sorry Let's do this stock install. We already done. Let's run stock. Stock scan. Let's do USR bin bash. Maybe not. LS. No. Uh, ID. Is it exactly ID? And then we say S. And we say we own dash and perfect it works okay so we have tested now it works it's great so we validated this okay so the next step we want to do 
also go to stock plugins public. Uh, sorry, what I want to do is this. Perfect. So cheat remote. Yeah, origin. How do we list the URLs? Uh, verbose, maybe. Maybe it's just I just need to say verbose. Yeah. So let's add another remote called cheat remote add uh, let's call it Well, I don't need to do this right now. I'll do this after uh, when we want to push the code to the repository because I have to. I have to update. Uh, I have to update my repository in GitHub because it's outdated. So let's just first create a new branch where we're gonna do our plugin if worker version one let's just uh, and then we sort out we will sort out the um, the commits how we do the commit perfect so now the first the easiest thing is to let's copy one existing plugin. I like P P P E info. Uh, be I because it's I used it before as an example for when I was developing the the the, the leaf plugin. It makes things sometimes easier. So. To have an example name, let's call it Leaf. Leaf. Uh, actually, It's a shame I never updated this. It's really a shame. Anyways. Uh, let's see. What did I put? So we had two commits. Files changed. Let's see what I. Yeah. <laughs> Version 0 0.1. So I'll leave it at 2.0.0. Uh, let me check what had Marcus put on, uh, what Marcus has put on others. 2.0. 3.0. I think it's uh, all is yeah all of them must uh, should be above uh, 2.0 yeah it's because of the API change most likely so let's just keep it at 2.0 let's say this is me This is easy, URL, so yeah, that can be Apache. Okay, let's, let's copy this from the original file. Pass an abstract P, ELF, and macro files using leaf, and then packaging for, 
Ah, interesting. Include package data. True, it's different. This is, this is a different way of doing it, I guess. Because we had the manifest before, maybe now we don't use the manifest anymore. Seems so. So let's call it leaf, and then it's the leaf stock, and then we don't have this. Yeah, because it's basically it's a different way of doing things. Uh, I actually think I prefer this one, having everything on the setup.py file. So requirements, what requirements? We have okay. So let's see which which version of leaf it has. So 0 0.9.0. .0. This isn't the latest version, I think. This is not the latest version, is it? Oh it is. It is 0 0.9. Let's see the master, what version do they have? Oh, 0 0.9. So since 0 0.9, which was no, it's actually quite recent. So we have we might have to deal um with some changes on the leaf API as well. Because uh, at the time when I first developed the plugin, uh, I think it was a different version. I think it was either 8.1, 8.2 maybe. Um, so yeah. So let's make sure. Uh, as action. Let's do uh, requirements.txt just to have an idea of what they are using. Okay, so they use they use in, they don't use trick strict. They don't uh, seem to be using um strict requirements let's just make sure that it's not the case let's just check the first requirements of every single file and then we should basically have an idea of how marcus defines yeah, he never defines, oh, it says higher or equals, but then he never defines a strict requirement for a version. So I'm not going to, I'm going to do the same. So I'm just going to say this, oh, sorry, wrong, wrong place. I'm just going to say, and it's leaf, I want to leaf. And I want it 0 0.9.0, which is what we found. Yep. Okay. So let's see what next file. What file? We need to change the readme as well, of course. Stop framework, blah blah blah, plugin that parses. The data about the payload versus P. Once again, I'm just gonna be lazy and uh, sorry, and I'm going to copy. In that parses and abstracts p elf and macro executable files 
using leaf and predeceased metadata about the payload. Worker class, definitely all options must be set. So did I put some options? Yes, I did. So we have plugin configuration file. Hmm. Let me see. What does it point to? Okay, so it explains how to deal with the plugin configuration file, which is okay. It's fair enough. I have to investigate this because I can do it by plugin configuration file. I'm not sure about command and class. Hash payload, save results. Let me see how I do it. How do I process this? I'll have to double check. For the time being, I'm going to leave it there. But uh, I'm going to do a mental note. Hopefully, I will not forget. Uh, so let's just do uh, oh, <coughs> silly uh, check if the if plugin options may be set by the various methods as indicated by the readme b file let's do a pen because then we can always reuse this comment if i knew how to write so let's just leave it as it is options so the options is Hash payload, save results. Let's say abstract. It's how do you say ball? Hmm, interesting. So let's see. Find type of name. Read me. Dot md exec. So I am trying to understand how how does Marcus specify that uh, a specific option is boolean. So let's do cut. And less string. Okay, so he's he does true or false. And an example of that would be is the plugin. It's a worker plugin. And it's the SMTP plugin, so let's, let's have a look at how the README looks like with that uh, with that true false. Yeah, okay, fair enough. I thought it was doing something more advanced, but uh, clearly it's not. So. Uh, Wrong place to be once again. So abstract is true or false. Uh, let's do the documentation as it says here. Defines 
if the plugin outputs the abstracted um, um, how can I phrase this? Defines if the plugin outputs the abstracted version, maybe. Maybe that's like defines if the plugin outputs the abstracted version because Leaf can can output file type specific information, or it can abstract it. Uh, so I configure this in the plugin in the previous plugin. So I'm gonna add it. I'm not sure about this hash payload and the save results. I think these are by default options. So I'm not gonna add them here in the new version. Um, so let's just uh, do, do that. Change this here as well. If make sure there isn't any information. And this is still not very interesting. This is still just adapting one of the existing plugins because they they have the new structure and the new requirements in terms of files and things that need to be filled in. Uh, so that then we can add our own uh, it's not rocket science yet. So let's update this. So the name is Leaf Leaf. Okay. Okay. And let's let's do that. And then options. Options. Let's do abstract equals true interesting I'm not gonna replicate this uh, comment because well we already did the readme so actually I mean, uh, let's let's just confirm that the readmes um, don't have an extra new line I don't think I don't think it doesn't have extra new lines at all. So let's remove the extra new line that I added here. So just to stay, just to follow the same uh, coding standard or standard or how do you say? Um, well, let's just follow the way that Marcus develops software so that it so that it makes it easier for anybody that looks at one plugin and then looks at the other. It's not a completely different coding style. Um, it's a little bit more perceptible what, because uh, sometimes I see software being developed where one software developer does something in one in a way and another one does in another way and the other one does in another way and when you go and read that source code it's a mess because then you have to be always uh, aware of 
the different coding styles and it, it's, it makes things complicated. So let's do, so we might, so we should follow the same coding style that Marcus uses, that's for sure. And also it increases the, the likelihood when you are contributing to an open source project, if you follow their rules and their way of uh, developing software, their coding style, if you do whatever they do, for instance, um, you look at one of the commits of the, the team and, and you see, okay, they developed a new plugin. What did they add? It? Okay, they added documentation. They added this, they added that. They did it in this way. They used this and they, instead of using that. And all of these small details, when you want to contribute something to the open source community, it counts a lot because it makes it uh makes it uh, in a way it makes basically the the responsible person for that repository to be more open to accepting your changes because they see that you went through the trouble of making or trying to make sure that everything was up to the standards that they use and the way they do things so it makes them feel more comfortable as well because it's something that they straight up look at and they understand what going around what's happening so okay so I would say well, let's just leave it okay so this is the scan payload this pack this is species this is valid this is DLL driver so this is the all the functions from p file okay. so if we go <coughs> here i don't use ashlib athlib so let's go one by one so first, let's call this something else. Let's call this Leaf plugin, which is interesting. How, how does it know he should use the Leaf plugin? How does he know it by name? Does it use a standard for that? Because that would be interesting to understand how does Maybe he does some reflection and looks at whatever is a child class of worker plugin, maybe. It would be interesting. Uh, probably we will end up finding out anyways, but. Uh... Okay, so. This is the only thing. So this is how they now do the options. It's in the constructor of the class and then they do it differently. They don't construct uh, the arguments anymore, I think. So it's just, and then, and then it goes into, and then, yeah, perfect. Yeah, this is interesting. This is really cool. So now they don't use the, um, how is it called? Dark argument parse module. Or they use, but at least is in an, an internal function is not as I think it's a lot, it's probably a lot, um, a lot more user friendly or software developer friendly, not having to do these sort of things. So we define it. So if you have plugin options and abstract in plugin options, then we do abstract. Config as option, so it then it goes into the configuration file apparently, and then apps 
fact, config get options abstract not OS bat is absolute. Then it joins it. So we don't need to do this because we're not doing a path file. So abstract equals abstract. Uh, let me do so the parent. Yeah, we don't need this either, right? I do do some stuff with the file name, but this isn't saved, so let's not do this is not needed so it's not saved after this function so it's not needed yep so now yeah, self abstract equals abstract that's perfect so now we get into the scan a payload. Hmm. Let's say if, if payload content. Okay, so let's try to see in Leaf's documentation. How we can uh, how we can read files? Where is the documentation? Don't you have an online ver? Oh, here it is. Sorry, it's documentation. Parse and manipulate files. So you do a parse. How did I do it before? So I do the leaf open and then abstract to JSON to JSON. Okay, if we look at the function leaf open, I do leaf parse straight out of the bat, leaf parse. Okay. So let's see. Leaf exception. Okay. Where? Where is it? with parse, parse file name. Doesn't look good. So, but I used one where I basically just pass a list and a file name. So, maybe it's in the abstract. Oh uh, yeah, it's in the abstract. Okay, so I parse a raw list of integers and a name and a string, so for the file name. Uh, one too many. I want to see again uh, how P 
info gets the file name. File name get frame info. No, this is not what I want, I don't think. It's not what I want. Maybe it's in the payload. I have to check what the payload has to see if there is a dot file name or dot name property. <laughs> Can also handle an IO object. Let me see if I can find info JSON. Uh, what was the name of the function that I used? I uh, think to JSON. Let's see. Oh, nice. How nice. See, leaf import to JSON, import JSON, then it has a parse. Okay. Okay, so let's, let's try it. Nothing like trying and seeing the errors. So I'm just going to leave all the imports as it is and I'm going to basically I'm going to basically do this So let's do binary I seriously doubt that I need structure. I don't need this. Mm. Well, let's let's leave it, and then uh, if we need it, we add. So leave parse. Let's go back. So in this case this raw equals data content and the name equals something. So if we go to the stock framework, does it have a search? No. Um, Okay, let's look at the code. Let's look at the code. Let's see what the payload has. Search this ref repository payload code Python. I was hoping it would show me the first in the first uh, pages the the payload structure, but apparently I am without a luck without luck. So let's just do a payload dot. Or maybe this is regular expression based. I don't know. Uh, it's ignoring me a little bit. It's ignoring me a little bit, yeah. Mm. Payload dot com dot name. This is me being lazy because I don't wanna go to the file. Data classes maybe. 
let's see maybe it's in here payload meta looks good this is meta the payload here it is self content payload meta extracted by extracted from payload id mm. doesn't have a file name though how do I get the file name on the original version RF payload oh we have request meta wait where is it where is it request meta we had it here no I saw it somewhere request meta source Anyways, for the time being, I'm going to put it as uh, unknown, which was what I put here in case. Uh, let's say here. Uh, find out how to add the file name to uh, when calling when calling with if dot pass So just in case I hmm? what didn't he why didn't he append ah come on seriously okay so why didn't he append anyways oh i see i see i see okay i see yeah probably because yeah okay okay i was creating in different directories uh leaf leaf so now it's just in the previous directory which makes sense okay what was I doing before this distraction? Yes, coding, coding the main file. So we need to sort out how we do this, how we get the file name in any case. And then basically we can do the same thing that was done before if self dot abstract oh. english sometimes is very hard for me so the results is leaf dot abstract and then if this function fails it means that leaf's api uh, also uh, changed uh, so we have to add also error handling but i just like exception handling uh, because leaf does sh does throw them if the file is invalid and all these other things so let's we'll have to deal with that mm. 
but this is just for testing for now. So we don't need to do anything else. We don't need to do this. We don't need to do that. This is then the exception handling. We have to see how Marcos is now doing exception handling on the plugins and replicate that as well. So another to do. Uh, exception handling. And we should be golden. Oh no, we still we still need to check the init dot oh we don't have anything. Perfect. Then we are golden. So my next so next thing to test this we're gonna install the plugin and it should hopefully work. That's okay. Why is it taking so long? Did it fail or something? Why did it take so long? Um, oh, probably was still installing it. Okay, let's try that. Let's try to manually install it. Because maybe... Maybe there's something missing. Ooh. That takes a while, so uh, let's see. Yep, it's quite recent. Yeah, the latest version I was using, uh, yeah, definitely. Oh, definitely it was zero eight. Yeah. Uh, it isn't. Oh, okay, it installed. So let's try to install it again. Yeah, perfect. Stock list. doesn't show hmm. so let's see let's see if it works oh it does work I oh, know it doesn't hmm interesting Let's let's remove it and install it again. Maybe something didn't quite registered properly. Installed. No, something is missing. Something is missing.
this is not the case. So I did create a set to setup.py, the requirements, the readme, and yeah, perfect. It's the same thing. Apart from the to-do, maybe I need to move the to-do somewhere else because it's not part of the package. That might be might be doing uh, bad things. So let's just move it somewhere else. I don't know. Sometimes things are weird. So that's the requirements. That's the readme. That's the setup.py. And that's the init. Yeah, looks good. So why isn't this working? <coughs> Why, 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 why aren't you working? Maybe it's the... No, I should be... Uh, this might be a case of read the manual. This might be a case of me not reading the manual. Error. Worker failed to load. Pierre leaf. He doesn't find the... the it's interesting, it doesn't really find even though the plugin is in here. And it has everything that it should have, right? Or maybe not, wait, wait, maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah, it's missing the P info stock. Yeah, well. In this case, is missing the leaf.stock file. Okay, so this is me doing something wrong in the setup.py. Uh, setup so let's see. Yep, yes, my bad. My bad. It's going to complain it's already installed or is it going to force to install? Yeah, probably it forced to install. Let's see. Nope. Okay, let's. Let's remove. Let's install again. Yeah, now it should now it should recognize the plugin. Jeez. Okay, it's easy to do like this. Stock list. Yep. Now let's do leaf. Exception. Okay, so they changed the API. So there isn't any attribute called abstract to JSON. Might it be because it failed to parse the binary? Maybe it's returning none, and that's why it has no attribute. So let's just make sure it doesn't. I doesn't return none. 
let's be very gangsters <laughs> you gotta love this anyways debugging by printing that's awesome oh, it doesn't even print uh, how did so self log debugger let's try that Oh, yeah, my bad. I know why the print might not have worked because I didn't install the plugin again. That's the thing, I need to always install the plugin. So let's do that. And to install the plugin, we're gonna first remove it. And then we're gonna do stock install stock plugins with see oh my god it doesn't have any logs so let's uh, but maybe it did print out something did it print yeah it did print ah interesting it's not um yep it's returning something it's parsing the file properly it just doesn't have that specific api okay so they changed the api uh, also this doesn't work anymore so so there isn't any api there isn't any api called this so Let's go to the repository. Uh, does it have a link? Sometimes I'm lazy, but it doesn't pan out very good. Uh, let's go to the repository, the sources. API Python abstract Ooh. nope sorry I want <laughs> I don't want to look at C code today definitely not today as tired as I am it's not a good idea abstract here it is Oh my god, this is all code? C code? I think so. Yeah, this is all... Anyway. Uh, I wanna die. Uh, examples, let's see. Examples, Python. Abstract reader, perfect. That's what I want. Do I just need to call to JSON or something? Ah, no, because this doesn't print to JSON. Okay. Okay, let's see. It's called something as is to JSON from abstract. Okay, they changed the name apparently, it seems. Yep, I think they changed the name. Definitely sounds it looks like it. Yeah, they changed the name of the function. So
at least it matches so that's okay so let's reinstall it again let's run the plugin It's basically just making a string. It's not doing. Uh... Oh, wait. Okay, but. Okay, let's. Ah, oh, come on. It doesn't return a JSON object. Why don't you just return straight JSON object? <sighs> yes. Okay, so the problem is here I was expecting to have a JSON object, but instead I have a string. And that happens because if we come here, where was it? I think, yeah, in here, where it basically it seems like it's registering the, the Python to JSON functions and mapping it to the C version. It's mapping it to the to JSON string, which basically, even though it creates a JSON object, it then dumps it. So basically, which I know why they do it, it makes sort of sense, but it would be nice if we could access directly the, the JSON object, because now they are dumping it and now we are gonna have to load it uh, and then, um, so that stock and then dump it again, which is, and that's most likely why, yeah, that's why we, I had this self stock loads. Yeah. Okay. So let's change the source code. Uh, I, yeah, I don't like this very much. <laughs> um, not sure if I have access to that. Self stock dot loads. Yeah, definitely. It's a little bit of a merry-go-round, but uh uh no apparently not no yeah okay so let's see apparently it didn't work really i'm really tired just by looking at that i thought it was working ball uh, stock um, worker plugin worker plugin Self-payload. It's the only thing that we have to do. Base plugin. It extends base plugin. So let's see. Where's the base? <coughs> Config plugin options. And then it extends ABC. What is ABC? Let's see if we can find ABC somewhere. Maybe it's in the core. ABC, I don't know, seems like something else, seems like some other dependency, yeah, yeah, doesn't sound anything like that. So, can we find some dump module? R loads, R loads, this loads, so, no. Yeah, it's using it's not yeah it's not using the it's not using its uh its function anymore it seems so let's just loop 
import json that's right then we have to clean up the import table import table that's so that's so okay now it's working now it's working Now it's working. It's just perfect. So let's download some malware. Uh, where can I download some simple malware? Well, it doesn't need to be simple, but just to do some analysis. Our collections. Our samples. Ooh, nice. Is this binaries or no? What type of file is this? Mm. Otherwise, if I password does malwork, let's see what does it have. Download malwares. Oh, that's just just download some random file save file and let's unzip the file here okay so is a P file, so let's run stock on it, see what it uh, it does. Let's do a less. Perfect. Data directories, import table, resource table. Yeah, this is good. Look, even the manifest, it extracts the manifest. Wow, well, this is awesome. This is what we want. Now, let's try, let's try to cause some exceptions because that's on the to-do list, but uh, it's not implemented yet, but let's just, yep, okay. Compatible function arguments, the following arguments are supported. Invoked with none. Yeah, interesting. He's not throwing an exception. It's just not. It's just returning none when it parses the file. Apparently, I'm gonna make sure of that. Uh, what I want to do as well: plugins leaf, uh, leaf stock. What I want to do as well is not make it abstract test it without abstraction so does it work yep it does work it does work dynamic entries okay let's try with the malware file Seems legit. Uh, oh, it's signed. Seriously, is it fake? This signal, this uh, interesting. Ah, 
what is the signature for this Moscow Kaspersky <laughs> law? Uh, very interesting. So looks good uh, in more or less one hour and a half. I was able to port the leaf plugin uh, to uh, the new API, the new stock plugin API. Uh, the next step is going to be do some more testing, um, add some uh, random files, some more files, do some, uh, some real testing. Uh, I'm going to be downloading some malware and other binaries for Mac or Mac OS as well, OS X and whatever you want to call it, Mac files, okay, Mac binary files. And I'm going to do a bunch of tests to and see the outputs, see when it fails, what errors does it get, so that I can uh, then make sure it has proper error handling. And after that, I'm going to do the pull request. I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing that live. Uh, I might. Uh, in any case, uh, thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll talk. Ooh, I'll talk to you soon. Cheers. Bye bye.